let's do the Man United squad. We are going to get into the shoes of the new sporting director, whoever it might be. Um, news today that Manchester United have made of an approach for Newcastle's um, Dan Ashworth. So if he gets the chance to take a scalpel to the Manchester United squad, what should he do? We've written some of the names down here who are kind of up in the air at Manchester United right now. Let's put it that way. And Leanne, I'm going to ask you what you think should be done with them. Where shall I start? Should we start with a positive? Luke Shaw, I know you're a big fan of him. What would you do with him? I'm keeping him. I like Luke Shaw, but the only thing is he gets injured a lot. You know, in the last game, he he came off at half-time, but I like... He's consistent when he does play. I like Luke Shaw a lot. I, I And I think I've never been big on Luke Shaw. I know you haven't, but yeah. I just think when he plays, we're better. When he came and off when a half he time, plays well, yeah. he's one of the best he left backs around. Though. He's yeah, he is consistent, but to an extent, I think. He's been made in a very poor Manchester United era to look like one of the better players. No, but when but he went to centre back in a, in as a, well. In a good Manchester United era, would Luke Shaw have survived at Man United as long as he has? In your eyes, um, that's hard to say, really. Isn't and I it? still, because you're I, talking like but I still like set those Irwin. standards. I set those. I still set those standards. Yeah. I think Manchester United players should be like any really big club. First year, you get a year to settle in. Second year, you need to perform at the highest level. Or in the third season, you'll be playing for someone else. That's how Real Madrid view their squad when they spend big money on players. You either come here and deliver, or you play for yeah, someone else. Yeah, but the else. thing is, Luke Shaw. They've also got in players like Alex Tellez. To, to, you know, kind of push Luke Shaw and he seemed to get better when that happened. I like Luke Shaw. I'd keep him. Yeah, I would keep him too. Yep. But that's because I've got to say in world football generally at the moment, you know, world-class left-backs are very difficult thing to come by right now but if there was a non-Liverpool Next. associated <laughs> Andy Next. Robertson, you never know. Harry Maguire? Uh, nah. Not keeping. You'd sell him? Yeah. Fair play to him. I a mean, decent I'd, season? I mean, decent few games. I wouldn't say season. Like, let's not get carried away. Um, he was good the other day. I like the assist, you know. He, and the thing is, I, it's hard because I want to give my opinion on Harry Maguire, but I feel like every time anyone gives their opinion, it seems like it's an attack. It's not an attack. We critique. I critique what I see, as we all do. I'm asking you and what you would do with him. Get, would you, would no, you, okay. sell. Sell. All mm-hmm. right, okay. Uh, Raphael Varane. We're in defence to start with. Keep. Yeah, really? Yeah. Why is that? Because I like him, and I think I don't think he wants to be you at the like club him. anymore. That's not enough. No, nah, but I like him <laughs> as a player. And I like him. He's I mean, a nice he's a guy. serial winner. <laughs> nah, but I like him. Like you know, some players just think you know when he's playing. But I think when he first came, I don't think he really did what everyone expected him to do. But I think when he does play now, you can't say oh, Varane makes loads of mistakes because he doesn't. But the problem with Varane is that similar to Martinez. They're, inj- they're injured a lot. But Varane of late hasn't really picked up many injuries. But there was that weird stuff at Christmas where it was like he wasn't going to play for Man United again. They were looking to sell him. It was like, do you remember? When he did one in... Mm. Now he's sometimes on the bench. Like, it's a weird one, really. I'm keeping Varane. You keep him, yeah? Okay. Uh, we're not getting much better, by the way, Man United at this point. But there you go. Anthony, 90 million. Nah, sell. Sell? Yeah. Do you need to re- me to really uh, say why? No, I don't. I just I don't, don't think, know who's going to buy him. I just don't know if anyone's going to buy him. But I don't think anybody needs me to say, because I was, I like Anthony when he first came, because I'm like, you know what, let him do this showboating if he produces, because I'm not from that same place of like, oh, don't have these players do this type of stuff when he was doing those yeah, yeah. things. Let you them be creative. Yeah. But he just hasn't got, he's not that guy. He's not that guy and he never will be. Jaden Sancho? Sell. Is there a way back? Sell. I don't think so. Do you I'm think I, there's I, a way back? He ain't apologising to Eric Ten Hag, is he? Yeah. And that's his way back if Ten Hag's not the manager. Well, me. look at what happened with Rashford. Rashford made his mistake. Clearly, Eric Ten Hag, they had that conversation. Whether fans agree with it or not, that he got back into the next squad, he apologised and he moved on. Now, I don't necessarily think Jadon Sancho has to apologise because you don't know Walker Day in the life of, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But at this point in time, I just I don't see a way back for him at Manchester United. OK, all right. Andre Nana, goalkeeper, 50 million. Nah, sell. Sell? Yeah. He's just come. Nah, do you know what? I want Ramsdale. You want Aaron Ramsdale? Yep, I want go. Ramsdale. I told you this the other day and I'm, I'm staying with that. Okay, all right, all right. What, what was it? But are you disagreeing with me about Onana? Do you think he's been good? <laughs> no, but he's a decent backup. All right, yeah. so you're, oh, so I'm looking at it for starting. So you're, okay. I'll you keep said him as sell. Backup. You said sell. Yeah, but so I, thought, you... I'm ruthless. <laughs> I thought it was starting 11 or sell. I didn't even think about the bench. <laughs> 
<laughs> Still, I'm talking nah. about the squad. Okay, yeah, for uh, real. But he ain't going to sit on the bench, is he? Let's be honest. I don't oh, no, know. no, they're not going to sit him. I don't know. Yeah, I no. Know. All right, we'll bench Anana. A, a couple more very Ramsdale. quickly. Scott McTominay? Keeping him. Yeah. Yeah, squad player. And it sounds bad because he's been good this year, yeah. but he, he just, I don't know. I like Scott McTominay. Mm. I mean, he offers everything, doesn't he? He gives everything to the club. He comes on, he scores goals, and he gets the club. I'd keep him. But I've got to say, the goal-scoring run that he's gone on, he's going to go to Euros with Scotland in the summer. I think he feels like he should be playing football every week. And I don't know. Look, I know he loves Manchester United, but I think he's had an effect on games where he will feel... I can go and play somewhere else. And I think we will end up selling Scott McTominay yeah, unless will. he's going to be a first 11 player, which I, I just don't see. But he is exactly the kind of player that you need in your squad who's come through the academy. The other thing is FFP. And if Man United are going to overhaul their squad, he goes as pure profit if they manage to sell him. And the way he's played, they might get a decent amount for him. So yeah, I think, I think now at, might be the time. Yeah, and I think when you look at when we were great, you know, we didn't have... Everybody wasn't 100% like the best player in the world, was they? We had certain players like, you know, Darren Fletcher, D. Sun Park, but they did their job. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't set the world on like. Wes Brown, John O'Shea exactly. strikes me as a player, the, you know, the, like we did, can trust, you can yeah, always trust. That they're like people, are, they're respected by the club. Yeah. It'll be difficult. I don't know if football's changed. I'd love, you know, a club like Manchester United with the academy that they've got, you'd always love them to have players, local players or players that have come through the academy who can really be the bedrock of the team. Like Kai Rooney. <laughs> I'm just, well, listen, <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of the videos. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I think I really, <laughs> we need to hold on to him, sign him up. Yeah. Um, Casemiro is an interesting case, is he not? He is because I do love the guy and I love his heart and his fight. And I think last year he was one of our best players, but then it's like this year everyone's saying he hasn't got the legs and all that. I'd keep him and I'd put it, I mean, maybe on the bench I to just... not play as many games. My thing with him last year, I think he missed like seven games or eight games due to suspension. Yeah. Like, he's always going to get that book in, you know, but at the same, similar to Gim Gimaraish, like, yeah. these types of players. I don't mind that either, but I do mind it when we're picking up stupid bookings, like he did at Sellers Park last year, and he missed the Arsenal game. So those are the moments where I think game management comes into plays from Eric Ten Hag. Take him off, but you shouldn't have... Let's be honest, I'd you shouldn't rather, have to. I'd rather have all the things that he brings and have that, you yeah, know, few yeah, suspensions yeah. than not have him in the squad. But... I want to see a Man United team that's really that really plays good football. I know it sounds great. I, I know it sounds great to say, look, or rather spoil is probably the word, that, to be like, I really want a team that's not just winning but plays great football. But I do think, actually, the first step for Manchester United is to go to a, a brand of football, a style of football, because what's it, what's it all about? Honestly, what's it all about? If it's not for entertainment at Manchester United, the trophies hopefully will come off the back of it. That's yeah, I think that's. I think you're right about that. Like the style of football, I don't think any of us could tell you what what this we're trying it. to do. This like when you watch City and you watch, I know they're City and they're one of the best teams in the world. But you watch a lot of teams, and even teams that are like mid table, like a Brighton, you see they have a style of play. Tottenham, Ange Postecoglou's gone in there, and you see exactly what they're trying to do. Even when Madison was injured. You see, like, Oli Skip, yes, has played in there. People might not think he's that guy, but he does the job that Ange Postacoglu has asked of him. Yeah, and yeah. you can see that, can't you? They yeah. have a style. And I think you're right, Hugh. We don't seem to have that at Man United, and it's weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, very. I, I'll say three at once, because I think you're going to do the same thing with all of them. Diogo Delot, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Christian Eriksen. I think different case scenarios. I think wan has been better this season, but then when he's got better, Eric Ten Hag has put him on the bench, which I've been quite surprised at. Because he's got better with the ball at his feet. He's always been one of the best 1v1 defenders in the league. He has. You can't deny that. But going forward, he was not very good, was he? But I think he's improved and now he's on the bench. I would still keep Wan-Bissaka. Yeah? Yeah, I would. Okay. I'm, Delot? Nah. Even though he's been better this season. <laughs> Ruthless. No, but even though he's been I'd better this season, lot. would I'd you? I'd keep Delot. I'd keep Delot, yeah. Really? Eric Tanner's over, having over him. Over wan Nah, see, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Why? I don't know. I think 1v1 defending-wise. I think Dalo like, picked up a really good... He got the assist in here at the weekend. But again, Aaron Wan-Bissaka or Dalo, they, they shouldn't be really starting Manchester United fullback, should they? They no. should almost be those players that are like, you know, coming in in the League Cup or those types of games. Like, But I will give it to Wan-Bissaka because when you're at the game and you see, he gives everything. You know, he's defended is unbelievable and I think he has got better going forward. And Ericsson? Uh, sell. Sell? Yeah. 
like think him. ultimately, I do. I, like I mean, no, oh, good. I said I like. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Ericsson. But again, like when he's in the midfield at the Tottenham game, when I was at the Tottenham game at Old Trafford, the game's by passing him. It just is. But it may be like when he was at Brentford, you know, he was good. But he's at Man United and he's not really offering much. All I'll say on Man United is. Dan Ashworth, whoever comes in as sporting director, it needs an overhaul, that squad. They can't go meekly through the next few seasons. We'll sell two here, buy three here. This squad needs a sledgehammer taken to it, and he needs to be doing that but Rashford from the day you, here. You were keeping Rashford. He, well, there's no point even talking about Rashford because Rashford's not getting sold. He's just not getting sold. I don't think anyone's going to pay his salary, let's be perfectly honest, at another club. To replace Mbappe at PSG, possibly. If they offered 80 million for Rashford? You're keeping Rashford, regardless. I think the club will keep him. That's why I didn't think... I don't, just, I don't see any way that they would sell him. But would you? 80 million? Yep. Sell him? Yep. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? Because of lack of consistency. But I just think... That Is he really going to get you double digits every single season? No, the fans just have a relationship with him. I love Rashford, but at the end of the day, football's football. We want to win games. Are we going to win a league... As Marcus Rashford leading the line. Uh, everyone knows my view on this. I've said it a million you times. You think we are? No, I said we're never going to win. A, uh, if he's in our starting 11, we're never going to win the Champions League or Premier League. That's I truly believe So is that. that proving my point then? Well, no, you're saying you're keeping him? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, thought, we, I thought we went bench. through this. <laughs> 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 he can stay at the club. Of course no, he, he ain't can. staying at the club being on a bench here, let's be honest, wage-wise. We're talk- Well, listen, it's Man United, isn't it? Money comes in. They, that's ultimately 80 mil, it. PSG. I'll take it. All right, that's Manchester Leanne Sanderson, sporting director at Manchester United. <laughs> I love Man United. Negotiations you know there, live on the radio. 80 mil, players. PSG, I'll sell him. <laughs> oh, I love all of our players. Anyone who wears a Man United shirt, I'll always back them. But realistically, it's my job to give my opinion. And well, you've sold half of them, but yeah, okay, she's back. She's backing you guys publicly, but she would actually sell you, and she just said it live on the radio. And would most Man United fans agree with me? I think so. Let me know. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four.